So our function, just like before, radius needs to be a function of theta. And we're going to go with our limits of integration. Uh, let's go with some nice interval notation. We're going to go from alpha to beta. So this will be the exact, exact same start as before. And x equals r cos theta, y equals r sine theta. So what we're basically doing is just relating everything back to what we did in rectangular coordinates. So we're doing all the same stuff, just different coordinate system. So we're going to relate it back to x and y. So before in rectangular or Cartesian coordinates, so we had one way to write it was square root, well, so one way to write it would be dx squared plus dy squared. Other way to write it, 1 plus dy dx squared dx. And probably that second way was the way you did it most of the time. 1 plus a derivative squared square root. A lot of blank stairs. I think that's what you used, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that was. OK, so that's what we used before. Uh, alternative form is uh, square root dx squared uh, plus dy squared. So we're going to go and look at these. So this is Cartesian coordinates, good old days. So we're going to turn this into polar now. So what I need is, um, let's we'll start with the exact same thing. dx squared dy squared. Now I'm going to multiply by d theta over d theta, <coughs> which of course is 1. So it doesn't change anything. So I'm going to distribute the denominator d theta into the square root. So that's going to go in. We'll do an intermediate step. I'm just doing this so that we can see the square root uh, going into the square root properly when we multiply. So I'm squaring it and then square rooting. So that's the arc length formula we're going to use. And our thetas go from alpha to beta. So they want a to b before, but we're just going to switch to Greek a and b. So it's alpha and beta. So what we need to compute is what is dx d theta and dy d theta. And then we'll be ready to, uh, this will be in a form a little bit more useful. So x is r cos theta somewhere. Yeah, x is r cos theta. Of course, r is now a function. I think I called it f of theta somewhere. Yeah, our radius is going to be f of theta. It's a function of theta. y similar, r sine theta. So f theta, sine theta. 
So dx d theta, dy d theta. All right, compute those two, and then square them and put them into the uh, formula here. What rule do we need to compute these? I think we did this before. Product, product rule. So it's just a little bit of a product rule. And you don't know anything about the derivative of f, so you can just write it as f prime theta. So I'll start you out with that. <coughs> you should get some trig cancellation here happening. So it'll be ugly for a minute, and then there better be some sine squareds, cos squareds added together, and we know those are one. So go ahead, compute these two product rules. Then you're going to square them and foiling them and then plug them in. So there is some pretty serious algebra going on here. It's not difficult, just going to take a couple steps. So I'll give you a 30 second head start and then I'll go for it. So unfortunately, that's the square, the foiled out version right there. You get the first term squared, last term squared, and then you got the outside, two outside, inside, because they're going to be the same thing. So what cancels out when you add dx squared, dx d theta squared, dy d theta squared? The two f prime theta, f theta sine theta cos theta. Yeah, the two ugliest terms cancel out because you got positive and negative. So I don't really want to can't, it would be bad notation to cancel them out here because that would make these equal signs false. So you don't want to cross them out where they are right now because then you're going to have some false equations on your paper. So. <coughs> 
I'm just going to know that they're going to cancel. I'm not going to cross them out. I'm just going to write the simplified version down here. So do your best simplification you can from here. So factor out what you can. I have it written so you can pair things up nicely. So factor out f prime squared out of the first one and uh, f out of the second one. So intermediate steps are really bad. Last step, not so bad at all. So any questions on all that calculus, algebra that we just did? All right, and we're just going to take that final version and drop it into our length formula right here. L equals integral alpha to beta square root <coughs> f prime theta squared plus f theta squared d theta. So I have an alternative form I wrote below it. F of theta is just r, and then f prime is dr d theta. So you can use either form, whichever of the two you want. So if you like to think about the function uh, r equals f of theta, go with the first one right here. And if you want to sort of leave it in r's and thetas, you can use the second one right here. So you choose one. You don't need both. This is our last example. Oh, last example in chapter 11. All right. So we're going to find the perimeter of the cardioid. So I think we graphed this and talked about why you can go 0 to 2 pi. If we don't want to spend the time to graph it, let's think about when would this actually equal We can see, hopefully you can see it, it will equal 0. What theta value makes uh, r 0? 
Zero makes it zero. What is the next time it's zero at like the next positive if you go the correct way around the unit circle? So go the positive way. When's the next time it's zero? Two pi. Two pi. So I know it will go from the origin, do some curve, but it will get back to the origin at two pi. And I know it's not going to hit the origin in between. So we're going to go zero to two pi. So this is where our theta lives in. So we got alpha and beta, 0 to 2 pi. All we need to do is use the length formula, the arc length formula, and we'll get the full perimeter. So we got r. I'm going to put in r, uh, square r and put it in here. The other thing I need is dr d theta. So really quick, we could find that, which is regular sine theta. So everything it needs on the screen right now, go ahead and plug it into the arc length formula. You got to square some stuff, so make sure you FOIL correctly. And simplify it down. So that was relatively painless to set up as long as you followed each individual step, didn't make any algebra mistakes. Didn't, I don't, we didn't need the product rule at all, which is nice, or chain rule. All right, how do we approach this antiderivative? What's a good thing to do? So sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is one. So you want to be careful how you think about this, but it's going to be an extra 1. So I'll write it as 1 plus 1 minus 2 cos theta <coughs> d theta. So we got 2 minus 2 cos theta. So what type of integral, how, I don't think it's going to get much simpler than 1 minus cos theta. So there's not, if it was 1 minus cos squared, what could we do then? Sine squared. That's sine squared. Pretty much would be easy after that. It's not 1 minus cos squared, it's 1 minus cos. Any ideas? We could try by parts. What's the easiest tool when it works? U sub. I think there's only one thing to choose u to equal. What's the only thing that would be reasonable? One minus cos theta. One minus cos theta. The only other thing you could even choose is square root one minus cos theta. There's not really a there's not really another choice after that.
All right. So the uh, you know, d theta, the problem is we don't have a sine theta to cancel out our uh, sine theta that we get right here. So we've got a slight problem. So that u sub is not going to be great because we're going to be left with uh, we're going to have still some theta hanging out. So we're not going to be able to go all the way into u. Hmm. If we wait another minute, class will be over, and I won't have to solve it. <laughs> Waiting until the timer is out? <laughs> oh, yeah. There we go. So you got to reach way back into pre-cal 2. And I, th I don't think I wrote that down this quarter. So... The way I remember it, I think sine squared theta equals 1 minus cos 2 theta over 2. So we can start here. So the problem with this is we don't have 2 theta, we just have theta. I can fix the divided by 2 part. We'll just multiply by 2. Now what I'm going to do is cut the angles in half, both of them at the same time. So I'm going to replace theta by theta over 2. So we're going to get 2 sine squared theta over 2 equals 1 minus cos theta, like that. So there's our 1 minus cos theta. It will actually turn into a sine squared, but not the sine squared you may have been thinking of. It's definitely not just sine squared theta. That's something very different. So now you could break the 2 out as a square root 2. That'll turn the square root 2 into a regular 2. So that'll work. And you got square root sine squared, which is just sine. Actually, technically, it's not really just sine. What does square root x squared actually equal? It doesn't quite equal x. So how can we fix plus or minus x? Absolute value. So this is square root 2, square root 2. Absolute value, sine theta over 2 d theta. How do you integrate absolute value? We have to know when is it positive, when is it negative. And when it's negative, we have to force it to be positive. Right? I'm, I'm pretty sure we did this in Calc 1, and then again in Calc 2. Okay. All right, when is it negative? We got theta over 2, so we have to be a little bit careful. It starts to be negative, usually in quadrant 3 and 4, but we're So when, theta, when the angle is between pi and 2 pi, we're on the bottom half of the unit circle. And that'll be 2 pi. All right, so it'll be negative between 2 pi and 4 pi. Does that affect our integral? We're stopping at 2 pi. So we're actually going to be positive from 0 to 2 pi. Does that make sense? If I went to you know, 2 pi to 4 pi, I'd have to put a negative sign in front of it to go from it being negative to positive. Wouldn't we have to do it at exactly 2 pi? Yes. At 2 pi is 0, so you don't have to worry then. But when it becomes, if you went past 2 pi, 
any amount, it would be you'd have to do absolute value. So you have to make your negative negative again to make it positive. All right, so it's going to be greater than or equal to zero between uh, zero and two pi. So we don't need to worry about absolute value. It's going to already be positive.